Introduction to Computer Science CEC 100 This text is an invitation to learn about one of the youngest and most exciting of scientific disciplines, which is computer science. Almost every day, our newspapers, televisions, and electronic media carry reports of significant advances in computing. Although the average person can produce a reasonably accurate description of both scientific fields, even if he or she did not study the subject in school, many people do not have an intuitive understanding of the types of problems studied by computer science professionals. And for now, you might not have the same fundamental understanding of the work that goes on in computer science. So in fact, many people harbor one or more of the following common misconceptions about this field. So they have the common misconceptions about what is computer science. Now, let's study, let's see what is computer science. What is computer science? Computer science is, has a common misconceptions. The first conception is Computer science is the study of computers. This apparently obvious definition is actually incorrect, or to put it more precisely, incomplete. For example, some of the earliest and most fundamental theoretical work in computer science took place from 1920 to 1940, years before the development of the first computer system. And the reasons, it is no more about computers only, but it is in a broad aspects. The second misconception is computer science is the study of how to write computer programs. Many people are introduced to computer science when learning to write programs in a language such as C++, Python, or Java. This almost universal use of programming as the entry to the discipline can create the misunderstanding that computer science is equivalent to computer programming. Programming is extremely important to the discipline. Researchers use it to study new ideas and build and test new solutions. But like the computer itself, it is a tool. When computer scientists design and analyze a new approach to solving a problem or create new ways to represent information, they often implement their ideas as programs to test them on an actual computer system. That's why the reasons is learning to use programming languages is almost universal use of programming as the entry to the discipline. The third misconception is computer science is the study of the uses and applications of computers and software. If one's introduction to computer science is not programming, then it may be a course on the application of computers and software. Such a course typically teaches the use of a number of particular packages such as word processors, search engines, database systems, imaging software, mapping packages, smartphone apps, and web browsers. This meaning creates wide range understanding because these packages are widely used by professionals in all fields. However, learning to use a software package is no more a part of computer science that drivers education is a branch of automat automotive engineering. To the reasons that the packages are widely used by professionals in all fields. The common misconceptions about computer science are not entirely wrong, but they are just sadly incomplete. Computers, programming languages, software, and applications are part of the discipline of computer science, but neither individually nor combined do they capture the richness and diversity of this field. Now, the true meaning, the definition of computer science. 
computer science is the study of algorithms, which includes the following. Their formal and mathematical properties, their hardware realizations, their linguistic realizations, and their applications. Now, let's see to it one by one. Studying the behavior of algorithms to determine if they are correct and efficient. That's there in their formal and mathematical properties. Designing and building computer systems that are able to execute algorithms in their hardware realizations. Designing programming languages and translations algorithms into these languages so that they can be executed by the hardware in their linguistic realizations. And identifying important problems and designing correct and efficient software packages to solve these problems in their applications. Because it is impossible to appreciate this definition fully without knowing what is algorithms. Let's look more closely at this term, algorithm. So what is algorithm? Algorithms is a procedure for solving a mathematical problem in a finite number of steps that frequently involves repetition of an operation. The broad meaning of algorithm is a step-by-step -step method for accomplishing some task. Informally, an algorithm is an ordered sequence, right? It's an ordered sequence of instructions that is guaranteed to solve a specific problem. Example, it is a list that looks something like this, okay? From step one, to step in, you can do something, step one, two, three, and to step in, you can stop, you are finished. If you are handed this list and carefully follow its instructions in the order specified, when you reach the end, you will have solved the task at hand, right? All the operations used to construct algorithms belong to one of only three categories. So these are the three categories to construct algorithms. First is the sequential operations. Second, conditional operations. Third, iterative operations. For sequential operations, this is a sequential instruction carries out a single well-defined task. When that task is finished, the algorithm moves on to the next operation. Sequential operations are usually expressed as simple declarative sentences. Example, add a, one cup of butter to the mixture in a bowl. Subtract the amount of the check from the current account balance. Set the value of x to 1. For the conditional operations, these are the question tasking instructions of an algorithm. They ask a question and the next operation is selected on the basis of the answer to that question. Example, if the, if the mixture is too dry, then add one half cup of water to the bowl. Second, if the amount of the check is less than or equal to the current account balance, then cash the check. Otherwise, tell the person there are insufficient funds. If x is not equal to zero, then set y equal to one over x. Otherwise, print an error message that says you cannot perform division by zero. Now the third one, 
the iterative operations. These are the looping instructions of an algorithm. They tell us not to go on to the next instruction, but instead to go back and repeat the executions of the previous block of instructions. Example, repeat the previous two operations until the mixture has thickened. While there are still more checks to be processed, do the following five steps. The third, repeat steps 1, 2, and 3 until the value of y is equal to positive 1. We are using algorithms all the time, even though we don't call them that. Whenever we follow a set of instructions to assemble a child's toy, example, bake a cake, balance a checkbook, or go through the colors registration process, these are the good example of an algorithm used in everyday life. That is the set of the instructions that we are following.